this section, we are going to be dealing with the debtors and creditors reconciliation. Our objectives are to record the financial transactions in the debtors and creditors ledger, to make the adjustments and corrections in the accounting records concerning debtors and creditors, then to be able to prepare our debtors and our creditors control accounts in the general ledger, and also to be able to prepare a debtors and a creditors reconciliation at the end of the month. Just starting off with the introduction, let me just remind you how things would normally happen. We would potentially have a transaction occur. So in, in this case, let's say, for example, we sold goods on credit to debtor A. Smith. Then that transaction would then be recorded in the subsidiary channels. If we sold things on credit, it means it would have been recorded in the sales channel and would increase our debtor's control. We then record that transaction, that same transaction in the subsidiary ledger. The subsidiary ledgers we've got are the debtor's ledger and also the creditor's ledger. And then all the subsidiary channels, so your cash receipt, cash payment, sales channel, and all those journals would then be posted to the general ledger. So this is where we'll affect our debtor's control and our creditor's control. So if we look at recording in the debtor's ledger, the format of the debtor's ledger looks like this. You start off on top, detailing that it's the debtor's ledger of which company. Then for each debtor that you've got on your books, you would detail their name, and you'd also give that debtor a debtor number. The format takes into account the date, the details, the folio, and then you'll have to classify the transaction either as a debit or a credit, and then what your final balance is. But like we normally would have in the general ledger, we start off at the beginning of the month with our balance. But in the subsidiary ledgers, we call that balance account rendered. So in this example, we show 1st of June account rendered and this data, G. Smith owes us 500 rands. We then take all the transactions which come from the sales journal and you would detail the actual date and the invoice number and because it's coming from the sales journal, we have sold to them. That amount will go to the debit side and you will have the balance increasing accordingly. When recording the subsidiary journals, you have to take note that you have to record the transactions in date sequence. All the items that come from the sales returns journal, in this case we've got a credit note, would go to the credit side and reduce our balance. Money that we have received from the data, which comes from the cash receipt journal, we'll have to note the receipt number and it goes to the credit side. In a case where we've given the data a discount, you would first show the receipt number, for example in this case receipt number 205, let's say we gave the data a discount of 50 rands, the first credit would be for 550 and you'd leave a balance of 50 rand. Then on the same day, the 25th, you'll show the receipt number 205 for your CRJ, and on the credit side, you will then put the discount of 50 rands, which will then bring down the balance to zero. Dishonored checks, which will then be found in the CPJ or the bank statement, will then come to the debit side so that they can increase the balance again. If we decide to charge interest or any other type of transaction which does not fit into the above, it may go into the general journal and you'll write the, gener the general voucher number. In this case, we've charged interest of 10% on the account, which is 60 rand, and it increases the balance to 660. But if it was a credit loss and we decided to write this amount off, then obviously the transaction would be on the credit side. If we look at how we would record in general in the debtor's control account, this is in the ledger, we'll start off with the balance and because the debtor's control account is an asset account, the balance will sit on the debit side. All the monies that we have received, which lie in the total column of the debtor's control in the cash receipt journal, you'd put on the credit side and your description would be bank and settlement discount granted. Amounts that come from the sales journal would increase our debtor's control, therefore would go to the debit side with the description sales. 
If the debtor has returned some of the goods, that would be lying in the sales returns channel and the description would be sales returns. Whenever a debtor has a dishonored check, it would then appear on the cash payments channel and our description would be bank and we would increase the debtor's control again. And last, we then have our sundry accounts, which may appear on either side. We would then balance off the account and find which side the balance must lie. So if our balance carried down is on the credit side, it means our balance brought down for the beginning of the next month would then be on the debit side. Recording in the creditor's ledger is very similar to recording in the debtor's ledger. The format is identical with the exception that now everything works in the opposite direction. But you would start off with your account rendered, which is your balance, on the in the beginning of the month. Amounts that come from your purchases journal, or sometimes called your, your creditor's journal, would then go to your credit side because we're increasing our creditors and creditors increase on the credit side. Where we have returned the stuff to our creditors and we got a credit note, we'll then record that in our purchases returns journal and to decrease our creditors ledger, we'll have to debit it and adjust our balance down. Monies that we have paid to our creditors and which this we find in our CPJ would debit as well to lower the balance. Any adjustments which we made in our general journal will then go to the corresponding side. So in this case, it's a 60 rand, which is lowering our balance, but it could be on the credit side, depending on the transaction. If we look at the creditor's control account, we'll also start off with the bank balance. The ba uh, Sorry, not the bank balance, the balance of the account. The balance of the account in this case would lie on the credit side. All the amounts that come from your cash payments channel you'd put on the debit side and your description would be bank and settlement discount received. This would be the total of your creditor's control column in the CPJ. Your purchases, which appear in your purchases journal, would go on the credit side to increase the balance. Your purchases returns would lower the balance, therefore would come on the debit side. And then you take on your sundry, credit, your sundry accounts, which may appear on the debit or credit side. You then balance off the account and your balance brought down right at the end would lie on the credit side. Once we are done, we take all the balances of our debtor's ledger or in, we can also make this a creditor's ledger and we list them in one listing. So debtor number one, two, three and four and you get the total of your debtor's ledger. This is where we then compare that total to the balance of the general ledger account and they have to be the same. However, because of certain errors and omissions and transfers, we may have to perform a reconciliation. Unlike in the bank reconciliation statement, all the differences which are noted between the debtor's list and the debtor's control account have to be corrected so that at the end, those two balances are the same. But some of the errors you may find is if there's an error in the source document, which then would also would appear in your books of S first entry and in your subsidiary ledgers and could have been posted also to your general ledger. Recording errors in the subsidiary journals. So the source document is correct, but when we record it in a certain journal, it might have been wrong and the posting therefore would also be incorrect. Incorrect posting from the journals to the general ledger or also to the subsidiary ledger, so the debtors or creditors ledger. Incorrect additions in the list of debtors and creditors. So everything works fine, but as we add up the amounts, we actually make a mistake. And also incorrect additions of the journal's totals, which would mean that we would post the incorrect amounts. Thank goodness that in real life, we don't have to worry so much about these small additions errors because these days accounting systems are fairly computerized.